He is a Cornwall Regional Hospital. He's a consultant to radiation oncology, and he is here to share with us on the topic of the role of radiotherapy in the fight against breast cancer. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Welcome. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. He's at Cornwall Regional Hospital. He's a consultant to radiation oncology, and he is here to share with us. Hello, hello, just continue. Good right, morning again, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Sharma, please bear with us. We had a little technical difficulty, but you can go ahead now and present. Uh, not able to share my screen, so I don't know. Uh, maybe you have disabled, it says, sharing. Dr. Sharma? Yes? We are ready. Ma'am, I'm not able to share my screen. Uh, they have to give me some rights. Uh, I guess the host has disabled my sharing screen. Hello? Hello? Dr. Sharma, we are here. Yeah, uh, I was asking if you could give me some rights to share my screen. I'm we are sharing the screen, Doc. Well, yeah, we go ahead, Doc. You, you go are, ahead. You are the, you are the um, um, so Dr. Cardwall? Mm -hmm. I'd ask you if you could pass the, the host back to Dr. Sharma, please. You, you currently have the host. If you could just pass that on to Dr. Sharma, then he'll be able to share his screen. Thank you. I'm waiting. Dr. Connell, um, if you're hearing us on this medium, can you pass the host back to Dr. Sharma? Seems like Dr. Cornwall is not there. Not getting her. Um, she has a voice.
Hi everyone, sorry about this, we're waiting on Dr. Cornell. Dr. Cornell, um, can you release the host back to Dr. Sharma, please? If you're hearing us. Okay, everyone, sorry about that, mm -hmm. Dr. Sharma. Uh, you now have host control and should be able to continue your presentation and share your screen. Sorry about that. Is everybody able to see it? Hello, everyone. Hello, uh, Dr. Sharma. We're hearing you. Go ahead and continue, please. So we're seeing your slides. You're, right. you're live now. Go ahead. All right. Good morning uh, to all my audiences. Uh, uh, I want to thank you, uh, the Jamaica Cancer Society, for this yet another opportunity to present. And uh, I wish to extend my appreciation and commend them for their efforts, you know, to be able to bring us all together on this platform 
and host this their calendar event uh, even in this difficult time so, and uh, i encourage i mean I'm, I'm happy a thumbs up to them to and encourage them to continue their good work uh, about my presentation here uh, i have uh, keeping the mixed audience in mind i have tried to keep uh, these slides simple uh, though i had a short notice but i hope i'm able to do some justice so going right ahead, uh, I'll skip through the, some slides because, uh, you know, uh, that time constraint, I see I have only 20 minutes allotted. So jumping right on, crush, uh, crunching some numbers here. Uh, now, All right, so I'm sorry I had some difficulty. Now I think I'm able to do it. So just going on to the numbers to give us an idea about the, uh, the enormity of the situation. You know, this is some data that I have from Global Plan, uh, the latest 2018 figures that came out, the cancer burden being 18.1 million and the number of cancer deaths being 9.6 million. This was their numbers in their last uh, release re report in 2018. Now, uh, if you can see from this chart, you know, uh, by another next two decades, uh, this number and the overall incidence, the number of cases will go well beyond 30 million in the next two decades. And when we cause, uh, talk about Jamaica, it is also a concerning fact where cancer, as you can see from this pie chart, that it is about accounting for almost 21% of the deaths in Jamaica after the cardiovascular diseases. The projected cancer incidence Again, at currently it's about close to 8,000 cases. If you can see in this figure, the mortality associated is about five, close to 5,000 cases now. And you can see how this, you know, is jumping forwards as time goes well. The worldwide estimates put uh, breast cancer uh, incidence to about 11.6%, which is the second most common after lung. It means the mortality associated with breast cancer uh, is about 6.6%. Uh, this is in contrast to our numbers here in Jamaica, where we have the breast incidence stands about 13.3% as per their figures, and the mortality is about 8.7% for all the cases. Now, all these uh, figures have been actually given by Dr. Cornwall also. The only new thing that I would want to present, I was when I was preparing this uh, presentation, I came across this uh, uh, report which was there in the uh, American Society of Cancer on, uh, Clinical Oncology Journal. It was a report coming from our University of West Indies, where they looked at the trends in the mortality of breast cancer from, the, from 2010 to 2014. And what it actually showed us was that the, the age standardized breast cancer mortality rates has increased from 21.8 in 2010 to 28. And what is important here is to know that this for us in our uh, in, in, uh, when it comes to jamaica what is important here is that this mortality rate is more the increase is seen more in the age group between 35 to 44 and more than 75 and as you follow dr uh, did you follow that dr Connell's presentation that these age groups have basically been excluded in the screening guidelines. So you can understand how it is important. And if you compare this increase, overall increase in the incidence of mortality based cancer, the trend here in Jamaica is actually opposite what we see in the US where we see a decreasing trend. So these are all concerning facts when it comes to uh, breast cancer. And I have put in here some numbers that I saw at my hospital at Cornwall Regional. So 
I've got and some data like from 2014 to 2019 that I had collected. And you can see from these numbers that breast cancer is almost about 25% of the case, total cases that I see here uh, in my clinic. Uh, the only concerning fact here, maybe you guys have noted that in 2019, the number of cases 69. Now this number variation you're seeing because, you know, until 2018, we had the medical oncology and the radiotherapy clinic, we were combined together. But from middle of, mid of 2019, we have kind of separated. Now medical oncology is registering the patients separately from us. So probably that would, uh, you know, explain the discrepancy here because the, all these numbers previously are combined numbers that we saw in our, both our clinics. And again, this is to show the percentage of breast cancer cases as compared to the total number of cases. The red bar is the number of breast cancer cases. So you can see it's about, the average range is about 25% of my cases that we see here. Now, when it comes to cancer, you know, once the diagnosis has been made and the staging has been done, the next critical and I would say the most confusing question is the way, what is the best way forwards? We are at the crossroads, you know, what is the best way in terms of diagnosis and staging, improving of the staging, and then in, obviously the best treatment approach. So a lot of information every day, new things are coming on, it leaves us confused, you, you know, and we have a lot of options. Now, now the main, uh, Treatment options when it comes to oncology, uh, if I have to broadly classify them, you have surgery, you have chemotherapy, and you have radiotherapy. These are the three main, uh, and obviously there are other hormonal therapy and other <coughs> areas also that have been used. Now, I'll be talking about radiotherapy here. In, you know, radiotherapy is nothing but the uh, use of ionizing radiation in the treatment of cancers. And this has been there ever since the discovery of X-rays in 1895-96. And as soon as these uh, X-rays were discovered, you know, they have been used in the treatment of cancer. You know, one of the earliest reports was in 1899 for the treatment of basal cell can cancer. And over a period of time, uh, the equipment, to, the radiation has remained the same, but the equipment that delivers this therapy has undergone revolutionary advances, which I'll show you as you go along in this presentation. Uh, here again, like just to uh, understand how radiotherapy is important in the management of uh, uh, treatment of uh, cancers as such. Yeah, I've put in some numbers again to give you an idea that, you know, almost uh, 50 to 60 percent of all cancer patients require radiotherapy in some part of their disease management. And you can see between the two main centers, the uh, uh, KPH Kingston and Cornwall, we are now close to treating almost a thousand patients. This year, we expect this number to be close to a thousand patients uh, in the year. And now, bringing our attention back to breast cancer, as is the uh, you know this presentation is about. Now, no individual, one individual uh, professional uh, specialty is uh, alone is good enough in the management of cancer disease, majority of our cancer diseases, and it's especially true for breast cancer. It come, calls for what we call as a team approach. You know, the oncology team approach, we have the surgeons, the medical oncologists, the radi radiation oncologists, pathologists, radiographers, and other paramedical staff, psychologists. So basically it's a team effort. Everybody has to, you know, come together and deliver for the best results for our patients. Now, this is more, I know when you see this uh, uh, flow chart here, this will be, you know, maybe reiterate my point more. Breast cancer, once it is diagnosed, you can see that you can broadly classify into uh, three major categories, the operable cancer, uh, breast cancer, a large operable breast cancer, or a locally advanced breast cancer. So after the diagnosis, initial diagnosis, you can see the next, the first common step is, you know, if it is the operable breast cancer, the first step is surgery. Now, in breast cancer management, surgery is the most important part of therapy, I would say. It's the baseline. That's what basically cures the disease. Role of radiation, role of chemotherapy is more in the new adjuvant or adjuvant intents. But the actual curative treatment remains surgery. This surgery itself has undergone, you know, revolutionary changes from 
major radical mastectomy surgeries to now what is called as the breast conservation surgery. That has been that is the actual gold standard nowadays. So where we are going in more and more for organ preservation. So all these surgeries and the treatment management uh, algorithms are now planned as like you know where we want to minimize the <clears throat> effects of uh, radical surgeries and try to conserve the organ functions as much as possible so the same has been true for breast cancer so in early stages it's not a problem breast cancer you know you can easily go when we say breast conservation surgery it's basically a wide local excision of the lump followed by radiation treatment and adjunct chemotherapy and if hormone therapy is indicated we do that in case of large operable breast cancer which is like when the tumor is more than uh, you know five centimeters uh, but there is no skin involvement or if it is locally advanced where there are matted no skin involvement in such cases uh, usually what we prefer is a new adjunct chemotherapy where we try to shrink the disease have a response assessment and see if, if a breast conservation is still possible. If not, we go ahead and do a mastectomy surgery there. Then is, it is followed by radiotherapy. So you can see basically in the management surgery, radiation, chemo, hormonal targeted therapy, all have a very important role in the management of breast cancer. And when it comes to the role of radiotherapy, two major indications. One is it and the adjuvant or the post-op setting. Post-op setting of radiation. Now it's in post of VC, we do whole breast radiation. That has been the standard practice. Once the surgery has been done, radiation usually was given to the whole of breast, and this has been there since the 1990s. Now, the purpose of doing this post-op adjuvant radiation is to eliminate the residual foci of foci of tumor in and around the tumor bed and in the rest of the breast, because there have been studies, you know, which have shown that that even after surgery, a good surgery on mastectomy, there have been recurrences. So uh, the adjuvant treatments, chemotherapy and radiotherapy have been added in order to improve the local control for the disease. And obviously the second indication for palliative where, you know, where uh, there is compression, like spinal cord compression when the disease spreads to the spine or locally the disease is ulcerated and there is bleeding or hemorrhage happening and uh, obstruction causing like superior vena cavity obstruction causing uh, you know uh, breathing difficulties and obviously the pain when it goes to extensive bone metastasis presenting with pain pathological fractures so radiation has a role in this palliative situations too i'll go a bit uh, uh, more in deeper into the adjuvant radiation the indications for radiation therapy all cases of breast conservation now since we're going less radical when instead of mastectomy we are just doing a wide local excision uh, we have to add on extra treatments to in order to ensure you know their uh, the treat uh, best management for our patients so if a patient lady has undergone best conservation then all such cases adjuvant radiation is a must you know it, it, it's an indication once breast conservation has been done breast radiation has to be added in cases of mastectomies, however, modified radical mastectomies, uh, the indications are only when the tumor is more than five centimeters, if it has been locally advanced like this, there was skin or chest wall involvements or actually nodal involvement if it was not addressed during surgery. Earlier on, it was like if only if three or more nodes were involved, but now the indications have changed and even with a single node, moment we address the nodes also. Uh, L uh, lymphovascular invasion, positive perineural invasion, younger age are some of the other softer indications in post mastectomy cases that we are using. Nowadays, even like, you know, uh, for you know, ladies with higher risk of recurrences, like one, those with central and medial, uh, medial quadrant tumors, uh, even uh, when they are as low as like two centimeters, much less than five centimeters, then also we can consider doing radiation, especially for younger females having extensive lymphovascular invasions. Now, how this radiation therapy is delivered uh, to patients, you know, this is the uh, telecobalt machine. I think most of you would have seen this uh, in the our old uh, Cornwall Regional and KPH. This was the machine that we had been using until recently. 
Now, this is a pretty simple machine with the radioactive cobalt in the head of the machine, which is basically like giving out radi radiation 24 7. This is somewhere in the head of the machine. The patient is lying down on the couch here, and you know, based on our those calculations, the time is uh, calculated and the radiation, the, this source comes to the head of the machine and the radiation is delivered to the patient. So what we are using here are gamma rays for the treatment of patients. Uh, unfortunately, because of the simple uh, nature of the machine, nothing much can be done about the modulating the beam that is radiation beam that is coming out of the head of the machine and uh, to shape the, the beam as so basically a wide area of the pa of the patient is actually affected and you know as a result the mortality and morbidity associated you can see with these old cobalt machines these are some of the uh, different grades of skin reactions I have given here for the patient as during the course during the course of radiation and this is one of the grade four reaction you can see how Post radiation skin changes are there. Now, so th this is one of the examples. I mean, with these older machines that we had at our centers that we were using, uh, uh, skin changes, arm edemas, brachial plexipathy, soft tissue necrosis, even pneumonitis, chest wall fibrosis, frozen shoulders. There's there there were different, you know, problems that were associated and uh, associated with the treatment delivery with this old cobalt machine. As a result, you know, it has given way to its uh, newer cousin, which we call as the linear accelerators with that being uh, capable of producing both X-rays and electrons. Now, the, what the beauty of this machine is this allows more precise and conformal delivery of radiation uh, to the patient and the ability uh, to control the dose to the normal tissues. As a result, the toxicity is less. The side effects are less, the morbidity that I was telling you now is improved and as a leading to improved survival. And how we are able to do that with this new machine is basically the presence of what we call as the multi-leaf collimators in the head of the machine. These are nothing but these are tongue-shaped grooves of tungsten metal that are present in the head of the machine and they can be, you know, they are present in the head and they can shape the beam of the radiation beam that is coming out of the head of the machine and because of this shaping it is also known as 3d conformal radiotherapy for during this treatment for these treatments we are using basically uh, ct scans you know the, the tumor is you uh, contoured based on the ct images that we take for planning and hence you know and then the radiation beam is contoured uh, uh, conformed according to the shapes of the tumor that we would have delineated and hence the name 3D conformal radiotherapy. Uh, and these are some pictures just to show you how we are able to, you know, conform the doses and reduce the exposure to the lung. Here you can see in this, we are using these modern techniques. A step ahead of uh, 3D conformal is intensity modulated radiotherapy where in addition to the benefits of 3D CRT, what we are able to do is the, that the individual beam that is coming out, it can be, you know, modulated in uh, the, the entire beam is broken down into small, small beamlets. Imagine your computer screen, you know, it has made of pixels. So if you are able to, uh, you know, modify the intensity of each of these pixels or the beamlets, you can get what we call as a dose wash or like a same beam but different intensities in different sections of that field that it is exposed to the area is exposed to this is all possible because of uh, sophisticated computer programming softwares that are now available and we call this treatment as intensity modulated radiotherapy this is again to give you like a mental picture of how it is different you know initially what we are doing in cobalt machine was extra based planning so it was more what we call the 2d planning use of ct scans and uh, the 3d technique gave us much more control and we were able to do 3d conformal now it, it gives more sharpness to the same 3d treatment by use of the mrt technique and you can see here how with the IMRT is even, you know, space the tissues better even than compared to 3D CRT also. So there has been an evolution. It's the radiation is the same. It is just the technique that 
we are delivering this radiation is giving us these advantages. So it leads to better dose homogeneity and better coverage, you know. <clears throat> now, one of the problems, though it is all good, the IMRT uh, the treatment, you know, it requires a lot of time because, you know, the patient is, uh, you know, the radiation, same radiation is given from different angles. So each time the machine has to move to a different angle to deliver the radiation, it consumes a lot of time. So there's another technique called rapid arc where the same IMRT treatment is done with one single rotation of the machine around the patient. So this saves on the time. Just one rotation, you can imagine the treatment which was taking place in 10 to 15 minutes time now can be done within one to two minutes. So it's, it's, it's again a form of IMRT, but it's the way it is, how it is delivered in one single rotation of the gantry around the patients. Now the advantages of uh, these new techniques, linear accelerators had been, you know, we have here in Jamaica also, these were realized from uh, some time now and there has been a commitment from, uh, there was a commitment from our government and a lot of initiative came from the public and private sectors also. And there was a change with a lot of support from the international agencies. We here in Jamaica were able to now improve our capacity for treatment of uh, cancer patients. And we are able to procure these new machines, the linear accelerators, most of you would be aware that we have renovated our Cornwall Regional Radiotherapy Department and we have opened our Linux Center at St. Joseph, which is a part of KPH from 20, since 2018. This has drastically improved our capabilities. We are now with the new machines that we have, you know, it has placed us in the commanding position in the Caribbean. As you can see from this chart, you know, except for maybe Trinidad and Cuba, there's no other English speaking company, uh, country here which can compare to us now with us, our Jamaica, we have three linear accelerators and the HDR brachytherapy machine available. So these are the new basic machines that we got under this program here, the linear accelerators, the CT, uh, dedicated CT for these centers and the HDR brachytherapy machine. And this is our staff here at St. Joseph at Cornwall Regional, uh, which we, we are, managing these two centers here. Now, to give you a brief idea about how this radiotherapy is done, I'll quickly run through, you know, just like as I said that the entire management of uh, treatment of breast cancer is a uh, team approach. You know, we need different specialties, medical oncologists, surgical oncologists. Within the radiotherapy also, we have different team members. We have our, not just a radiation oncologist, we have our radiation therapist, we have our medical physicist who are very, very integral in delivering this treatment. So for that, we need to understand a little flow chart, like a little uh, process of radiotherapy, how it is done. You know, patients usually when they come to us, they have been diagnosed, they come to us and, you know, their clear indication a patient evaluation or treatment decision with radiotherapy has already been done. So once that is done, the first step is like, you know, there is a involves counseling and constant taking for the patient for the planned treatment. The next step is the simulation or planning for the treatment. Basically, here what we are doing is the patient, the area to be treated, we are going to image the area that is to be treated with radiation. And it is done in position in a position that the patient would be treated, the most appropriate treatment position using different immobilization devices like molds and orphids. The uh, patient is placed in a position, a CT scan is taken in that position. You can see here, this is, this is something that we were doing in the old cobalt machine. After the patient is pressed, what is on this, what we call is the press board in a particular position. This position is important to expose the, the area of the breast that is to be treated and we take images. So this is like a old uh, 2D simulator. Basically x-rays are taken here and based on those ortho, uh, the x-rays uh, planning is done as to like what amount of dose and what beams basically that medical physics part is done and the treatment is delivered. This was this is something that we do on a cobalt machine but now with the new machines all patients we are being treated with the CT based planning approach. So here, instead of breast board, we use simple uh, vac locks or vacuum bags where the patient is positioned in a uh, 
comfortable position. We can use breast modes also that's specially made for these Linux. And after marking of the area, CT scan is taken. Now this individual CT scan, individual images, we do what we call as a target delineation. The, the breast and the vital organs are all delineated and we use now we give our medical physics this is our medical physics team now we, that's the job of our radiation oncologist after we have contoured and given us the, the, the dose constraints the medical physics team now would work to give us the best plan you know they use computers uh, software system to give us the plan as to how much dose which angle uh, and how many beams basically the technical aspect of the radiation uh, and we use what we call as dose volume histograms. Basically, these are graphical pictures which give us what volume of the tissue is exposed to how much amount of radiation to help us decide the best plan for those patients. Now, with these, now we, once the plan is finalized, we do what we call as a quality assurance testing. And once we're sure that, yes, this is the plan, best plan for the patient, the patient is called. Again, you can see how the patient was positioned during the simulation. We position them in the same uh, position on the machine, the treatment machine, using our laser systems. And before the delivery of each treatment, we do what we call as uh, check x-rays, wherein the actual after positioning the uh, imaging is done. Basically, it is a mega voltage x-ray that we are using there non modern machine which we can actually do a ct scan on the treatment machine using those mega voltage radiation now these images are matched with the actual planning scan you can see here to ensure that we are actually hitting the same spot position in the exact same position that we had planned him and ensure the precise delivery of radiation and this is how well, and the patient you know you can see we the 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 radiation therapist team is outside, but we are able to monitor the patient using our audiovisual uh, cameras that are there, and the treatment is delivered. So these are two plans that I wanted to show you. So just to compare, you can see how here, as in as compared to in IMRT, we are able to save more of lung and heart as compared to a 3D plan here. Uh, this is. Uh, a patient that you know now with more and more patients are coming uh, in the past two years i've realized that breast reconstruction patients who have undergone mastectomies uh, they have i've seen that there's a greater trend now that people uh, the patients are opting to do breast reconstructions so the breast reconstruction uh, as patients come with either a expander in c2 or the actual implant in c2 so we can do radiation so again uh, having an implant or a expander in situ is not basically a contraindication for doing radiation radiation can still be done the same way only thing is we have to keep in mind certain constraints and the customers because once a, a, a patient has done a breast reconstruction the idea is cosmesis you know to have and we need to maintain that so with with a foreign body in, uh, radiation being done with the implant and expander it can actually, uh, you know, have a, a deleterious effect when it comes to the cosmesis, you know, because of the fibrosis that happens post radiation. But again, if we follow our constraints properly and a meticulous planning is done, that is can all be avoided. And this is one situation: patient post radiation treatment. She had a BCS surgery, and now you see after one year, we can't even tell if she had any radiation. Now. So this basically is what I was actually uh, uh, telling you that, uh, you know, we have been doing routinely here in uh, Jamaica now. We are able to deliver radiotherapy by using linear accelerators with 3D CRT, MRT, rapid art techniques. Over a period of time, there have been new standards of care that have come up when it concerns to radiotherapy in breast cancers. You know. They are not so new, but yes, I mean, in our parlance, I would call them new here. Whole breast radiation followed by tumor by dose accelerated partial breast radiation. I'll go more on this. Conformal radiation, IMRT, VMAT is, VMAT is the same as rapid arc. This I've already, you know, discussed in these previous slides, where instead of the 2D x-ray based planning, we were using CT scans and IMRT techniques. 
hypofractionated artery. Now, traditionally, breast cancers, I think most of you are aware, is treated, uh, you know, over a period of five weeks. The radiotherapy is delivered for these patients over a period of five weeks, Monday to Friday. It's like uh, uh, the whole dose is divided, fractionated into uh, about a five-week period. Uh, over the past years, uh, more and more data has come out, especially from Canada and Europe, wherein they have found that you know protracting this five weeks to a three week period instead of 25 settings of radiation, having 15 to 16, we were able to get a similar result. In fact, similar results, and and that this has been more and more you know uh, justified in the various different trials that have coming up, and. Uh, this now, hyperfractionated RT now is basically the recommended uh, regime that is being followed all over the world nowadays. So instead of the five weeks, we do radiation for about three weeks, from Monday to Friday, 15 to 16 seconds of radiation. And we, all, we are almost getting the same results in terms of uh, disease control and Christmases and side effects. So actually comparable to the five weeks regime. Now, I would uh, want to add a word about the accelerated partial breast radiation. Now, what is the basically the idea behind here is instead of doing radiation to the entire breast, uh, radiating only the area where the tumor was, this has been thought of for many years and there have a lot of been trials that have happened to you know, uh, uh, look into that, why why expose the entire breast? Uh, and, you know, based on the various studies that have been available, they see that pattern, when we follow the pattern of recurrences, most of the recurrences were happening in the index quadrant where the actual tumor was. And a lot of pathological studies have also shown that the extent of the microscopic disease were not majority, 90% of the time, it was not beyond one centimeter from the primary tumor, except from younger patients. So this actually gave birth to the idea that, you know, instead of radiating to the whole breast, why not radiate just the the, area, the, the, the tumor region with some margin. And uh, there have been studies they, which, which show that the local control in some selected low risk patients with early stage breast cancer, they, they are comparable. The results are comparable to those who have been treated with the standard whole breast radiation therapy, right? And several, However, compared to whole breast radiation, there have also been studies that, you know, talk about inferior cosmetic outcomes when accelerated partial breast radiation is done. Uh, so the follow-up is limited. The studies are ongoing. So, but if you, uh, we have some kind of uh, consensus from Astro and APBI, which says that it may be suitable for some patients who are like low risk, more than 50 years in age, have invasive ductal histology, the tumor is more than two centimeters and their surgery margins are negative. There's no lymphovascular invasion. They are hormone positive, VCR negative. So these are some of the cases where this could be basically uh, be employed, you know, uh, and it has been tried and being practiced in many centers around the world. How this is done? There are different ways, invasive and non-invasive. Non-invasive is the same 3D CRT, IMRT techniques we can use instead of using the whole, uh, you know, using uh, treating the whole breast, we treat only a part area of the tumor. And there are various different invasive techniques uh, like interstitial bracket therapy, mammocytes, intraoperative uh, x-rays or electrons can be used. So these are the different techniques that we're using. Brachytherapy, you know, here, what, what we call brachytherapy, just the regular radiation that I was discussing till now was called as teletherapy here because the patient is lying on a couch and the machine is at a distance. So tele means far, you know, from distance, the radiation is coming and it is, uh, you know, delivered to the patient from a distance. Brachy, on the other hand, the radiation source is actually placed within or close to the tumor tissue. So brachy means close, so that is why the term brachytherapy. So in these cases, basically, uh, we use brachytherapy mainly for like cervical and uh, cancers or endometrial cancer where the, the radiation source is introduced into the vagina close to the area of the tumor. 
uh, that is called as intracavitary brachytherapy. There are different forms of brachytherapy. The one that we use for, for uh, breast cancers is called as interstitial, wherein the actual, uh, you know, the radiation source is uh, put inside uh, the, the tissue area. You can see, I mean, I'll go show some more slides here just to give you a better understanding. So basically what happens is we place very tiny thin plastic catheters within the tumor area, you know, and then these radiation treatment, these catheters are actually connected to the HDR brachytherapy machine, which has a very small, tiny radioactive source in it. So after once you have introduced these catheters and connected to the machine using a computer uh, generated program, this seed is pushed out of the machine in, through these catheters based on like in uh, a predetermined time for how much time this this source is going to be remain in the catheter and then travel back now the, the the benefit of this treatment is that you know what even though we have inserted the needles we can modify the dose also after the needles have been placed so you know it is something uh, Can show you how I mean I have some slides to show you here how these needles are placed inside the tumor tissue. You can see that it can be either a template-based system where we have a template and the you have free data mind notches where the needles can be inserted, or it could be a freehand technique like this. This is done like at the time of surgery, intraoperatively it can be it is done where the needles are inserted after the surgeon has cleared out the tumor and you know exposed the tumor area. You know, it can it based now we can insert the needles based on our uh, the tumor profile there. After these, we, we insert these needles, and then these are basically to pass the catheters. So you know, the tiny plastic catheters are now passed over these hollow uh, catheters are passed over these needles, and then the needles are removed. And now these catheters now basically these are hollow tubes which are connected to the machine through which our radiation uh, source can travel and you know deliver the radiation treatment to the area desired so this is how we do a 3d so once those uh, needles are placed we do a ct scan again of the patient in this position with the needles in place uh, with, the, with the catheters in place and now uh, based on the placement of the needles we are able to now generate a radiation plan and deliver the benefit of this doing this brachytherapy treatment here is that Unlike uh, uh, external beam radiation, where the radiation was coming from outside, these are high energy X-rays that are coming, and you know the heart, the exposure to the heart and the lung is minimized when you're using brachytherapy technique because the radiation source that we're using here it has a sharp dose fall off. So these surrounding structures are not exposed to radiation as compared to what is what they would be exposed to when we are doing external beam radiation. So this is again some pictures to show you how the radiation is delivered. Another technique of doing this uh, brachytherapy is the mammocyte technique or what we call as the intracavitary balloon brachytherapy technique. Now, <clears throat> this is as you can see a less invasive uh, technique, uh, much more simpler here. Basically what we are doing is instead of, you know, inserting the needles, there's this uh, catheter you know something like a foley catheter if you can imagine that is uh, inserted uh, within the tumor cavity so again carefully selected uh, patients uh, with tumor size less than two centimeters no negative patients and wherein like the skin surface uh, is at least five to seven mm the tumor is at least five to seven mm from the skin surface we can use this technique how uh, it is done is basically you know uh, this once that if the uh, it is done like for example in a post-op setting we can localize the lumpectomic cavity using an ultrasound then open the scar and insert this catheter it has two ports one is for basically the uh, radiation uh, source to travel and the other one is basically to uh, inflation channel so it's it's like once it is inserted this balloon is in, uh, inflated with saline with some contrast mix so that can be visualized on x-rays and CT scans and once it is in position then uh, again it is connected to the same rate 
brachytherapy machine and the radiation source can travel and deliver the radiation. Again, so that's one technique uh, of delivering the same brachytherapy. And these are the X-ray based or uh, CT based plan. Instead of photons, we are using electrons, or if it is basically an X ray machine, we use low voltage X rays. We are using. Uh, so, here, as you can see, that you know uh, how this is done basically, and what is important one the importance of doing intraoperative radiotherapy is that there's no gap between the surgery and the radiotherapy. So, you know, the, the tumor cells don't get any chance to multiply it is done in the same setting all right the treatment volume is small and uh, here yeah the much machine that is that they what we usually use is a dedicated uh, linear accelerators these are capable of generating only electrons so no special building design is basically needed they can be you know it can be carried into the theater and the radiation can be delivered directly into the cavity so all what we need to do is expose the area and you know, using skin retractors and put in the, the radiation tube inside the, to deliver the radiotherapy treatment right on the OT table. And another benefit here is that it's a single uh, shot radiation. You know, we are using the doses up to 20 to 21 gray in a single dose uh, of radiation, which is almost equivalent to that five weeks of therapy the patient would have otherwise had. Again, this is being done some for some centers in Europe, in Italy, to be specific, not many areas. Uh, the experience with this technique is still growing, you know. So basically, these were the new uh, uh, techniques that I wanted to, uh, you know, discuss and basically present. Unfortunately, we are yet to start bracket therapy here in Jamaica. Again, efforts are on. We have the machine. It's just now for, our, you know, uh, staff training to happen so before we can roll out these treatments here especially the interstitial brachytherapy now uh, coming out of the adjuvant treatments now i'm shifting i'm showing you some other role the role of radiation when it comes to uh, you know the palliative setting of breast cancer so you can see patients presenting with local pain and bleeding ulcerative visions obstruction causing supraminal level Okay, obstruction radiotherapy has been found very useful in a metastatic disease setting patients with you know extensive pain, brain meds bone meds uh, pathological fractures impending fractures spinal cord compression radiation has a very integral role in improving the quality of life in these patients you know patients don't have to survive if they can be cured still the life can be made better they don't need you know and radiation helps a lot in these cases too now with this, you know, I mean, uh, I think my presentation ended, but I would just want to add a few words on the challenges that I have seen that we face here. One is the ignorance, you know, uh, in the patient about the disease and the and the curability. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, I mean, patients are not aware and, you know, uh, the moment and the stigma that is associated with the disease, you know, I have had patients who have just completely refused uh, treatment, you know, and they are not sure. I mean, they uh, they get influenced by people where then not just the disease that they are uh, worried about, it's the treatment also uh, that they are concerned. You know, they, most of them will come home, uh, you know, listening from friends and family that, you know, uh, doing chemo, doing, ra uh, doing radiation it will actually do more harm than good. So, you know, this is a potential problem that we have and then uh, the next is about the accessibility of these treatment facilities and the options that are available for the patient. This again is a big challenge in our society. Uh, you know, two major centers of radiation, one in KPH and one in uh, Cornwall. Uh, this again is a big challenge for patients who are coming from far off. As you can know that these treatments are daily treatments, wherein patient needs to come in every day. Even though it's a OPD basis treatment, just takes about five to ten minutes, but you know, traveling every day, that, that has been a major drawback for patients not opting 
to continue with radiation. And obviously, you know, we need a greater interdepartmental coordination between our managing teams to improve the results for our patients. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I'm ending my presentation with this small information booklet that I have at my centers. You know, we are thankful to NHF. Uh, you know, they uh, had provided us the support to get these booklets printed. This has basically, uh, I've tried to compile all the information in regards to radiotherapy in this, you know, starting from what is radiation to what we expect, side effects, and what they can do in such scenarios. You know, quick facts, questions a good information guide not just for the patients and the families for others also so it's available um, at both our centers and uh, you know this is our bit in helping page breast cancer patients thank you Hello. Yes. Hello. I can hardly hear you now. You can hear me now? Yes, I can. All right. Uh, I think I'm done. Okay. All right, Doc. Mm -hmm. So we thank you so much for your presentation. Mm -hmm. And we are mm -hmm. so happy to have had you to share with us today. We apologize sincerely for the delay earlier in the start of your presentation. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of technical difficulties which have sorted out. We mm -hmm. thank you so much, Doc. Thank you, Doc. All right. Thanks, Amelia, Doc. Can you also switch back and make us a host, please? Hello. Next, we realize that we're going to be behind and we're going to try and keep our presentations tight. Uh, we have Dr. Bernadette Franson, who is sharing on lymphedema and breast cancer. So we, doctor's presentation has been recorded, so we just click play. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hose. Uh, Dr. Sharma, uh, if you're listening, can you make us the host, please, JCS? Thank you.